Okay, quick disclaimer. If you enter this video hoping to get an in-depth overview of how I studied for the USMLE, I'll leave a video somewhere in the corner explaining exactly that. Now, if you only happen to speak English because the video is in Spanish, uh, I'll leave an article down below in the description for you to check that out. It says exactly the same. But this video is not about how I studied. It's about the factors underneath my study that allowed me to reach the 99th percentile. You see, for a moment, I just thought about shooting the exact same video that I shoot on my Spanish YouTube channel. My resources, my schedule, all of that. But then I realized that, well, we all kind of use the same resources. Flashcards, a couple of Cubanks, maybe some books or videos, especially in step one. And that's it. And of course, there are variations. Some do more, some do less. But the more I read experiences, the more I realized that it wasn't the resources that made the score. The right resources only can get you so far. So why do we differ so much then? Why only 1% of us get above 270? Hard work, luck, fate, the special Red Sox of destiny? Shh, they're not supposed to know that, man. Well, for decades, we have tried to figure this out. And the best research available tells us that intelligence in the form of IQ and conscientiousness, or working hard, to put it simply, are the best predictors of academic success. But they only account for 40 to 60% of the variance among us. So what accounts for the rest? Well, I don't have a clue. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, that's true, I don't know. But really, no one knows. And mostly because the remaining factors change on a case-to-case -case basis. So I can't tell you why all people differ, but what I can do is tell you why I differ. Or in other words, how I, putting aside my hard work and intelligence, managed to get to the top. And the point of this video is really to give you a couple of tools that I found really helpful so you can implement them right away and get on the right track. And so let's find them out. Okay, just so everyone is on the same page here, I'll leave intelligence and hard work completely out of the equation for now. Those for sure are important but you don't really need me to tell you that being smart and working hard is needed to be successful. Having said that, there are clearly two things that looking back at my life have gave me an upper hand over my peers. And well, I do think that these eventually translated to the amazing score that you are seeing. The first one of them is actually teaching. And I'm not kidding when I say that the years I spent teaching in medical school probably gave me more points in the exam than any single resource could. And this is not an overstatement. You see, in order to teach others and to do it rightfully, not just to stand there for an hour reading slides, you have to break down the subjects in a way that makes the student in front of you understand. There's no single right way to do this, but what often tends to happen is that you end up explaining to the other one in the way you best understand yourself. I, for instance, try to make of every topic a logical sequence of events. One thing leads to another which explains the next and then causes the final. So if I have a very difficult subject to explain, I first have to nail down that sequence of events in my head before I word it out to someone else. And that's where the magic happens. By forcing yourself to organize the ideas for others, you're training your mind on the best way to organize ideas for yourself as well. And I did precisely that for five years during medical school. By the third year, I automatically translated everything I was learning into that teaching language. It became a habit. And you see, that teaching language makes everything easier. Just think about those times in high school when you were stuck in a math problem and the teacher came along and made everything look easier. And I do think that if you teach enough to others, your own mind will learn how to be that professor that makes looks everything easier, even for you. And so, whenever I faced a difficult question on the exam, that part of my mind always came to the rescue and helped me get a different perspective on things, to realize the details I'm missing, to see the bigger picture, to make all of the important links. And so, if you're in medical school or university and want to train your mind on not just being able to know facts and remember them, but to handle them at will, 
Teaching is the way to go. And if you don't happen to have a crowd ready to listen to you, well, you can teach to yourself using a technique called the Feynman technique, which is pretty much explaining the subject to yourself out loud. And yes, it works. When you start wording out the subject, you'll realize everything you don't know, everything that you still have to learn or to grasp a little bit better. The second biggest thing that helped me to get to the top is learning by layers. You see, details in medicine and in many other areas, I guess, are infinite. And you have these classes and readings in which you're bombarded with facts, such as dates when things were discovered, or curious facts, such as that there are more viral particles in the ocean than H2O molecules themselves. Which is true, by the way. And all of those pieces of information are great, what is not great is our ability to handle that information. We want so bad to remember everything, and yet the more we fill the cup, the less it remains on it. The way I grapple with this is by learning through layers of knowledge. So when I was facing a new subject, I made sure to just concentrate on the important parts. At first, I only learned the facts that I deemed useful, the ones that helped me the most to solve the problems, and I let go of everything else. For instance, when I was studying physiology, a recommended reading book was this heavy book of 4,000 plus pages. It was filled with equations and all of the studies behind them, and I didn't use it at all. I instead used this tiny physiology book that just explained basic stuff, like how we breathe, how we clot, and stuff like that, and in very basic terms. Initially, I felt behind my peers because they were handling these massive equations while I was just reading these short, tiny passages. But you see, the trick was that I made sure to comprehend every single why and every single how written down in those passages. And to my surprise, even though I didn't study any of the equations, when we presented them on class, I understood each one of them. I understood why they were the way they were, the way they were. And not only that, but many of my classmates who focused on the equations, who learned the equations, write them on their books, when they were in class, they didn't understood them because they were just focusing on the numbers, on the equation per se, not the reason behind the equation. And so they forgot them quite easily. And so by creating this layering system in which I first concentrated on the principles and then added the details, everything became easier. For instance, to learn antibiotics, I first just concentrated on learning their names. Just the names. And when I finally got that right, I passed on to their mechanism of action, then their use, then their adverse effects. And three years down the line, it is one of the subjects that I mastered the most, while some of my partners still struggle with their names and their mechanism of action and confuse one with the other. And when it came to the USMLE, well, I couldn't have asked for a better position to begin with. All of the things I learned made for the foundations that were needed to build up as high as I wanted. Learning new content was just a matter of where in my framework of knowledge should I locate this new piece of data. It felt like adding decoration to a house, not building one from the bottom up. So all of this is to say that you can't really learn everything at once. Some details will escape your hands, and that's okay. I urge you to consider that when learning new subjects, you first should focus on the bigger picture. Learn how everything works, why is everything in that manner. And when you have that down, you can pass to learn all the details. And yes, this approach probably takes a lot more time than just cramming down every single thing there is about a topic, but trust me, you don't want to live on an apartment that was built overnight. It will just probably collapse on you. But anyways, those were, as far as I can tell, the two biggest things that helped me get to this point, besides my intelligence and hard work. If you like this video and want to support this channel for me to continue uploading free content for you, please consider subscribing, liking this video, leaving a comment and sharing with your friends. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in that next video.